心，我可以有目标就往上爬。你相信，你可以勇敢的。相信我可以，有目标就往上爬。你相信你可以，勇敢的。相信我可以，有目标就往上爬。你相信你可以，勇敢的。Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Wow, it's a Friday morning. It's Friday morning again, and as usual, we have our secrets revealed series. Yes, I'll be revealing you more secrets. I'll be revealing to you the techniques to solve tax audit issue. And today, I'm gonna share 
one more topic, one more technique that is with regards to staff allowances. Yeah, now I can see people are coming in. Yeah, we are coming. People are coming in, and we are starting at eleven o'clock sharp. We're starting at eleven o'clock sharp, of which I will be sharing with you another technique. How did we help our client to solve? this tax audit issue with regards to staff allowances, all right? Now, since you're here early, because we're starting at 11 o'clock sharp, yeah? Since you're here early, help me do one thing, help me do one thing, that is to share this Facebook Live out. Yes, share this Facebook Live out to your friends, your family, business partners, business associates. You know why is it important? It's because today we have lucky draw. Yes, today we have lucky draw. Now, how do you win this and what can you win? We are going to give away, we're going to give away tickets to our tax audit and investigation webinar. Yes, tickets to our tax audit and investigation webinar. That is worth 498 ringgit each. Yes, worth 498 ringgit each. It's just very simple. You just have to share this Facebook Live out right now, then tag five friends in the comment box. Yes, just tag five friends in the comment box. Once we have seen you have tagged five friends in the comment box, your name will go into the lucky draw pool of which we will draw winners yeah, to win our ticket to the tax audit and investigation webinar with 498 ringgit each ticket. yeah. So do it right now. Share this Facebook Live out right now. Then tag five friends. Once we have seen your tag five friends, your name will go into the lucky draw pool, all right? So we're going to start at 11 o'clock sharp, so don't go anywhere right now. Stay tuned here. Don't go anywhere and start sharing and start tagging your friends, yeah? If you want to win that tax audit and investigation webinar ticket, right? I'll see you at 11 o'clock. Don't go anywhere and I shall see you soon. All right, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Yes, it's 11 o'clock. It's 11 o'clock already. And as promised, we are going to start our Facebook live session today and we are going to reveal to you more secrets. Yes, welcome to my secrets revealed series that is on techniques to solve tax audit issues. And yes, as usual, I will be telling you, revealing to you more secrets, more techniques on how to solve tax audit issues. Yeah, And I'll be showing you real case, real case, I'll share with you how did we actually help our client to solve 
tax audit issue. Yeah, and today our topic is about staff allowances. Yeah, about staff allowances. And I know a lot of you are still coming in. I can see more and more people are coming in right now. Yeah, it's close to 100 people already. But now let me tell you what, today we have a great news. We have a great news for everyone because today we have lucky draw. Yes, today we have lucky draw and you could win one of the tickets to our tax audit and investigation webinar. And that's worth 498 ringgit each. Yes, it's worth 498 ringgit each. Yeah? We are going to draw winners at the end of the session. But how are you going to do that? How are you going to win it? Very simple. First, it's just starting. We are just starting this right now. You still have time to just tag your friends. Tag your friends into the comment box. Tag five friends. Yeah. But of course, before that, share this out first. Share this Facebook Live out by just tapping that share button or clicking that share button. Yeah. Share this Facebook Live out by clicking or sharing your this Facebook Live. Then tag five friends. Tag five friends into the comment box. Yeah, I can see people are tagging the friends already. I can see Mira. Yeah, he, thanks Mira for tagging so many friends. Uh. I can see Bi Cheng Li. I can see Yu Kill is saying good morning. But yeah, please tag your friends. Tag your friends into the comment box. Share this out by just clicking the share button and you will run. You know, and you stand a chance to go in to win one of the tickets to our tax audit and investigation webinar. And that's worth 498 ringgit each year. All right, so just do that. Yeah, just do that right now. And we're gonna go into our session right now. Now, I can see now we have more than 100 people. Yeah, but as usual, you know, every time when I do this Facebook Live, you know, I would just try to ask, you know, I want to tell people that, hey, you know what, this Facebook Live session is all about, you know, sharing, it's all about telling people, you know, how to solve tax audit issues, all right? And that's why I'll be using real life case, yeah? But I can probably tell that there are some newcomers today, there are probably some first timers today. Now, can I just check with you, how many of you are actually first timers? Now, if you're a first timer, can you just put number one, put number one, into the comment box so that I know you are a first timer. You see, Facebook Live is all about interaction. I wanna be more interactive with you all. I wanna get some response from you all. So if you are a first timer, can you just tell me that you're a first timer by putting number one? Just put number one into the comment box. Just type one into the comment box so that I know you are a first timer joining this for the very first time, okay? Now I can see people responding already like uh, S. Ling Ching. S. Ling Ching is saying that she's a first timer. I can see uh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline Lian is also a first timer. Uh, that's Joyce Gunn as well. Joyce is also a first timer. How many else? Who else is a first timer today? Well, it looks like we have uh, a, still a few first timers. I know some of you have been following this, you know, following this uh, secrets review series for very long. Uh, oh, Hui Mei. Hui Mei is also a first timer over here. Now, now, okay, I know if you're a first timer, you probably would know that, hey, today we are doing episode 30, right? Hey, why is it episode 30 already? You know, what about the previous 29 episodes? Don't worry about the 29 episodes, yeah? Because you could always go back and view them, yeah? I know you said I have not, you know, uh, watched all the previous 29 episodes. I want to learn more from you. Go to my Facebook page. Go to my Facebook page that is Tax Guru Zen Chow. Tax Guru Zen Chow Facebook page. You'll be able to see all the previous 29 episodes in the video section. Yeah, just go to my Facebook page, Tax Guru Zen Chow. Go there, like, share, and follow my Facebook page so that you get to see all the videos yeah, that I have got yeah, for the previous 29 episodes. All right, I guess it's Sally. Vivian, you're also first timers. Good. Now, if you're a first timer, you probably do not know who I am, right? You probably say, okay, I know your name is Zen Chow. Yeah, Zen, all right? Uh, people call you the tax guru, tax guru of YYC. <laughs> now, but that's just what people call me, yeah? The fact is that I'm actually the tax director. I'm the tax executive director of YYC. Then you maybe ask me, and I say, hey, who's YYC over here? Now, let me just take this opportunity to quickly introduce to you who YYC is here. Now, YYC is actually an accounting and advisory firm established since 1974. And our aim here is we want to empower entrepreneurial success. Yes, this is our brand promise, uh, to empower entrepreneurial success. And of course, to do that, we need to have our vision and mission. Yeah, What's our vision over here? We want to be the number one, number one world-class accounting and advisory firm in Asia. But our mission is more important. Why? Why do I say mission is more important over here? Because we want to inspire everyone, including you, yeah? including you who are watching our Facebook Live right now. 
Do you want to inspire you to overcome your odds, unleash your potential, and more importantly, find fulfillment in life? Now, you see, it's a very important mission, right? Now, but of course, to do all this, we need to uphold our promises, yeah? Our promises are what? You know, first, we want to share expertise. You may ask, why do we want to do this kind of Facebook Live, you know, revealing all our secrets, revealing all our techniques to you? Because this is one of our promises, yeah? We want to share expertise. And we want to give the most proactive care, yeah? Especially to our clients. We have not just normal care, not normal care, but proactive care because we want all our clients to have the most positive experience ever, yeah? Now, you may think YYC is just a normal accounting firm, right? Yeah, I, well, there's so many accounting firms out there. YYC is probably just one of them. No, we are not a normal accounting accounting firm out there. Why? Because a normal accounting firm would probably only have compliance services. Yeah. What are compliance services? Like audit service, tax service, accounting service. Yeah. These are all compliance services. But we have much more than that. We have our very own advisory arm of which we do a lot of types of different advisory services like strategic planning, restructuring, you know, valuation, or even cloud and digital transformation. I think you have always heard about cloud, right? Yes, we even help people to do cloud and digital transformation, yeah? We have our very own business school. That means we hold a lot of workshops, seminars, you know, talks from time to time, yeah? And we also do a lot of outsourcing job like outsource accounting, outsource bookkeeping, or even outsource payroll, yeah? Through our global business services. Now, if you see any of these services that actually interest you, that you want to know more, feel free to just drop us a message here. Yeah? Just PM us, drop us a message. Our professional team would get in touch with you and let you know more. All right. Now, like I said, YYC was established since 1974. That means we are turning 47 years old this year. Yes, 47 years old, yeah. And we are an international firm. Yes, we are an international firm because we don't just have presence in Malaysia. We also have presence in Singapore. And if you know, there's a popular bank in Singapore, OCBC Bank. You heard of that? OCBC Bank is our investor. Yes, we are backed by OCBC. They actually invest into YYC and therefore YYC is backed by OCBC Bank as well. Yeah. Now we have more than 800 employees, we have more than 20,000 clients and we've trained more than 130,000 participants through all our workshops because we've done more than 5,000 workshops. Yeah. Now these are all the awards given to YYC throughout all these years. All right. Now having said that we are international, yes, we're international firm. We don't just have presence in Malaysia but also in Singapore, yeah. But of course, in Malaysia, our headquarters is in Kuala Lumpur, all right? And we have branches right all around Malaysia as well. We also have branches in Selangor, in Johor, in Penang, yeah? So we have branches everywhere. Now, every time when I come to this part, you know, I, I like I said, I want to be more interactive with all of you because Facebook Live is all about interaction, yeah? So that you can ask me questions whenever, you know, we go through whatever I want to share with you later. But first, let me ask you this question. Where are you from? You know, out of 100 over people right now, we have 100 over people watching this Facebook Live. Can I just check with you? Where are you from? Where are you viewing this Facebook Live from? You know, can you just tell me in the comment box? Yeah, put in the comment box maybe which state you are from uh, or which town you are from or which city you are from. Or if you want to be very specific, tell me which area, which part, you know, of KL, let's like say, yeah? Say you're from KL, you want to tell me which area, which part of KL you are from, yeah? You can say, I'm from Cheras, I'm from Stapak, I'm from Kepong, you know? You can be more specific if you want to, yeah? So tell me, where are you from? Where are you viewing this Facebook Live from today, you know? Which state, which town, which city, or even which area are you from? So that I have, you know, a gauge, you know, where are our viewers from, all right? All right, now just put it in the comment box and let me know, okay? Well, I can see B Ching has responded. B Cheng says PG. PG, I think probably that's Penang, right? If I'm not wrong, I think PG means Penang, isn't it? Yeah. All right. So who else? We, know, we have someone from the north already. Now, who else? You know, do we have anyone from the south or from the central Malaysia or even from the east coast, you know, east Malaysia? Do we have anyone from these, you know, other parts of Malaysia? You know, put it into the comment box. Tell me which state, which town or uh, which which city which area oh Kanesh also from penang yeah penang but bm yeah bukit metajam i know that's bukit metajam right okay i have halimatul from sungai penchala sungai penchala is klang valley area yeah that's probably near the near the damansara area right right uh, sungai penchala i suppose <laughs> okay and then where else okay let me see over here let me see i have people from uh penang wow a few penangites yeah from yukai asling ching or uh, one choice from puchong uh yukail is from kulai joho I have people from Sarawak. Yes, East Malaysia. Esther is from Sarawak. Johorian. Mira is Johorian, okay? Mua, oh, Hong is from Mua. Hong Wei Ku is from Mua. Sally from Butterworth, Penang. Uh, another 
Uh, Mira is from Batu Pahat. Okay, very good. Zoe is from Klang. Nancy is from Subang Jaya USJ2. That's very, very, very specific. Thank you, Nancy. And Joanne from Penang as well. Wow, looks like we have a lot of Penangites today, yeah? We have quite a lot of Penangites today, yeah? All right. Thank you so much for telling me all this. Now, but, but I know today you come in here. You don't want to just chit chat with me, yeah? Oh, Marianne is from Sabah Jaya, right? You don't want to come to chit chat with me, right? You come in here because you want to learn all this. You want to learn the secrets, yeah, that I'm going to reveal to you. You want to learn the techniques that I'm going to tell you on how to solve tax audit issues, right? But let me tell you this, yeah, today is very special. Yeah? Those that have not done this, uh, 100 over people right now, those that have not done this, let me tell you this again, yeah? Today, we have lucky draw. Yes, today we have lucky draw. And we are going to give out our ticket to the tax audit and investigation webinar. And that's worth 498 ringgit each year. Tax audit and investigation webinar worth 498 ringgit. If you want to win one of these tickets, go do this right now. Share this Facebook Live by just clicking or tapping the share button. Then tag five friends, five friends only into the comment box. Just tag five friends into the comment box and Invite your friends into this Facebook Live. Let them learn this together with you. You will stand a chance to win one of these tickets to our tax audit and investigation webinar. And that's worth 498 ringgit, yeah? So do it right now. We have not done so. Uh, those have just come in. Uh, share this out. Tag five friends. You will stand a chance to win our tickets worth 498 ringgit, yeah? We will do a lucky draw at the end of the session, all right? So do it right now, yeah, before we close this, all right? Now, okay, let's go back to you our techniques to solve tax audit issues. Now, those that have joined us for the very first time, just now I see some people who say first time, right? Did you know today is already episode 30? Yes, we are going to episode 30 already. Yeah, And you know what? Many people will say, huh? That means I've missed the previous 29 episodes. Now, don't worry about that, yeah? Don't worry about that. I know you have missed them, but go to my Facebook page. That's Tax Guru Zen Chow, Tax Guru Zen Chow Facebook page. Go there, like, share. Most importantly is follow, follow my Facebook page. You will be seeing all the 29 episodes in my videos section. Yeah, you will get to view all of them. But today, it's live session. Yeah, today, it's episode 30 and it's live session. And today, we're going to talk about what? We're going to talk about staff allowances. Yes. Now, as usual, those that have been following me, you will know I will always share one issue, yeah? And I'll tell you, this issue is the issue that the Inland Revenue Board has found out during an audit or investigation. And the Inland Revenue Board would say there is an issue with this, uh, this, this kind of expenses and they would disallow it. And how did we actually help our client to actually drop the issue? Now, staff allowances if you if you ask me you know what is staff allowance as well that means you have staff apart from paying salary you pay them something extra you pay them some some other remuneration you know allowances yeah that's staff allowances right but but is this tax deductible well if i ask you if i pay staff allowance is this tax deductible most of you will say definitely yes what you know i hire a staff and i pay them allowance because they do things for me because they do work for me it should be tax deductible, right? Now, let's look at what are the general principles of deductibility. Now, those that have followed me, you have heard this many, many times, right? Now, first, you got to understand the tax deductibility principle lies in subsection 33, bracket 1 of the Income Tax Act 1967. Yes, the Income Tax Act 1967, subsection 33, bracket 1, talks about how would an expense be tax deductible? So there are conditions, yeah. There are conditions in this income, uh, in this section, right? First, it must be incurred. Yes, when I say it must be incurred during the period, it means this allowance must be confirmed. That means you have the obligation to pay. It's not just a provision. It's not just an estimate, yeah. You cannot say, oh, I estimate, you know, I provide a, 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 an expense. I just estimate that I'll probably be paying this expense. No, you can't estimate them. You've got to make sure it's confirmed so it's incurred, yeah? So it must be incurred during that period as well. And most of the time, well, staff allowance, it must be incurred, right? So when you say, I want to pay staff allowance, it should be a confirmed amount, right? So this one shouldn't be an issue usually, all right? Shouldn't be an issue. Next, it must be an outgoings and expense. What do we mean by outgoings and expenses? It means... You have to pay money. <laughs> you got to pay money after you have incurred the expense. Yeah. So you may say, hey, I thought all expense, you got to pay money. One, but is there any expense that you don't have to pay money? Well, of course. Now, if you do accounts, if you are doing accounting, you will know there's this thing called depreciation or amortization, 
which is non-cash item, right? Depreciation, amortization, you don't have to pay money. Yeah. So, but what, if we go back to staff allowances, yeah, when, when I say I have the staff allowance, do I have to pay them? Yes, of course, I have to pay them. So it's an outgoing, it's an expense. Yeah, so no issue with this. Then it must be wholly and exclusively for business. Ah, this is very important. Every time when you pay staff allowance, you must relate it to your business. That means, yeah, when why do I pay allowance to my staff? Yeah, is this relating to my business? Is this part and parcel of my business operation? You know, paying them allowance is for them to do work for my business. Now, if you say yes, you know, paying allowance is because they're doing work for the business, then it's wholly and exclusively for business purpose. So this one is important. So if you satisfy this one, then you satisfy the condition. All right, then. We have two more conditions. The next one is revenue in nature. Now, what do we mean by revenue in nature? It means whatever expense that you incur, it must be a revenue expense. Now, when I say revenue expense, it means it is not capital expense. It is not capital expense. What is capital expense? Capital expense means you pay money, you get an asset. Yeah, Capital expenditure means you pay something, you get an asset, Yeah, whether it's tangible or intangible. But revenue means you pay money, you don't get an asset. It's just for the ongoing of your operation. So staff allowance, well, do you get an asset? You don't, right? You pay staff allowance because they do it for you. You actually don't get an asset. Yeah, So it must be revenue in nature. So no issue. Now, the last one, which is the most important condition, is it must be in the production of gross income. What do I mean by this? It means whatever expense that you incur, you must link it to producing income. You must say, oh, the reason why I pay this is because I want to generate more income. You know, I pay allowance to my staff because they're doing work for me. They're getting more sales for me. They're getting more income for me. You know, generating income for my company, for my business. Then it's in the production of gross income. So, can I say staff allowance is most probably in the production of gross income? I would say yes. Most of the time, it would be. Yeah. Otherwise, why do you want to pay allowance? Yeah. You want to pay allowance because you want the staff to do more work for you to make more income for you, right? So now, generally, you will see a hey, then staff allowances should satisfy all this, right? Now, but let me tell you, there is this issue. There is this issue where. The Indian Revenue Board came, yeah, they audited our client, they audited our client, and they said the staff allowance has got problem, has got problem. So what problem is this? So let me share this case with everyone. Let me show you what kind of problem, what kind of issue has our client faced, and how did we help our client to solve this issue? Now, let's look at the background of the case. This client of ours, yeah, their business activity is in the trading of spare parts. Yeah, they're a trader, trading of spare parts. But they paid up station and salesman allowances between 2015 to 2017. Well, well, as a trader, well, when you sell spare parts, you need salesmen, right? You need salesmen, you need people to travel around. So, well, you will pay outstation allowances for people who have traveled over uh, outstation, right? And you also pay salesmen some extra allowances because they are salesmen, they have to go and travel everywhere, right? So these expenses definitely has been allowed for deductions in the tax computation for all the respective years of assessment because they say, well, it satisfies subsection 33 one way. Yeah? Like I told you, right, the general principles of deductibility, it satisfies section 33, so they claim deduction. So rightfully, you think there's no problem, right? But look at this. When the Inland Revenue Board came and audit, when the Inland Revenue Board came and audit, they raise these issues. They raise these issues. They first, they say, hey, you have no evidence to prove such expenses. They suspect that the allowances paid are not genuine. Hey, why? Why would the Inland Revenue Board say there's no evidence to prove such expenses and suspected that allowances are not genuine? Because, because they said no basis, no basis for such allowances. Now, you see, whenever you pay allowance, you can't just simply pay, you know. Why? Why do I say that? Because if you just simply pay an allowance without basis, without reason, without a specific reason behind, you just say, oh, well, I just like to pay the allowance, yeah? You don't get deduction. Why? Remember just now when I talked about the conditions in subsection 33.1, it has to be wholly and exclusively incurred in the production of gross income. That means you must link the allowance to your business. You must link it to producing income. If you say there's no basis, you know, there's no even particular reason for such allowances, 
it will not be incurred in the production of gross income. It is not wholly and exclusively for business. So therefore, the Indian Revenue said, you, you can't show me the basis. There's no way to say you can just simply pay an allowance and claim deduction. So therefore, they say it is not incurred wholly and exclusively in the production of gross income. And what the Indian Revenue did was they disallowed the whole amount. They disallowed the whole amount of the expenses incurred. Yeah, and let me show you. These are the findings. These are the real findings uh, that the Indian Revenue Board has raised. Now, you see what they have said. Yeah, they said perbelanjaan bagi outstation allowances. Yeah, they say tuntutan ini dijadikan isu penemuan disebabkan tiada dokumen pembuktian yang dapat menyokong tuntutan ini dilakukan. Sila beri penjelasan yang terperinci. You see, they say you don't have evidence to show that these expenses are actually incurred in the production of gross income. So they disallow everything, you know, for our station allowance, 56,000 plus for all three years. Yeah, all three years, 56,000, all this allowed. And apart from that, salesman allowance, also the same. You see, all the salesman allowance, they, again, they say, tuntutan ini dijadikan isu penemuan audit disebabkan tiada dokumen perbuktian yang dapat menyokong tuntutan ini dilakukan. Again, no basis, no evidence. And therefore, they disallow the whole thing. And this one, salesman allowance, 240,000. Hey, 240,000, almost 241,000. Hey, if you add these two together, uh, you see, uh, previously it was 56,000. This one, 20, uh, 240,900. It's roughly how much? Look at it. It's roughly 300,000 already. You see, 56,100 plus 240,900. Yeah, it's roughly 300,000 already. Hey, 300,000 being added back, you know, cannot get deduction. Hey, do you know how much tax impact is there when 300,000 is being disallowed? The tax rate of the our client is 24%. 300,000 multiplied by 24%. Do the math. How much is that? 72,000 of pen, uh, of tax. That's just tax, uh, 72,000. Then penalty, 45% penalty added into this 72,000. Roughly half of it, another 30 over 1,000. That means the client actually has to pay 100 over 1,000, 100 over 1,000 of tax and penalty because these allowances are all being disallowed. So of course, the client came to us. We need to help them, right? We need to help them. So what did we do? We have to analyze, we look at, why was this outstation allowance being paid? Why were the salesman allowances being paid? We went in, we analyzed. So we look at how do they actually pay all these outstation allowance. And we found out that actually the client would pay outstation allowance whenever their staff has to travel outstation. Say, for example, if they have to travel to East Malaysia, they will pay them 420 ringgit per month. Yeah, and if it's traveling to South Malaysia, it's 360 a month. Upper North Malaysia, yeah, like Penang. I know a lot of Penangites today, yeah, but they'll pay 420 per month as well. Lower North Malaysia, 360 per month. Now, but if they don't have to travel, if they don't have to travel, if they just have to stay within Klang Valley because this coin is from Klang Valley, then of course there's no outstation allowance. And they also state that these allowances are for their meals, for their accommodation, and things like that. So these are all fixed allowances. So People, no staff that has to travel to East Malaysia, South Malaysia, Upper North, Lower North, you know, all these, they will have allowances. And these are all properly structured. Now, but they don't have a proper policy. They don't have a proper policy for this. So what did we tell them to do? Please do a proper policy. Do a proper policy, put it into the staff handbook, announce it to the whole company, you know, that everyone knows that there is this allowance. Yeah, so this is what they have done. And of course, for the salesman allowance, yeah, it's really more for people that have actually traveled. So what they have done is that they allow the salesman to claim, to claim petrol allowance, to claim car allowance, handphone allowance, you know, things like that. But this is only for salesmen. Yeah. Uh, sorry, this is for all staff, not just for salesmen. Yeah, it's for all staff, not just for salesmen. But of course, for salesmen, they can claim more, you know, like petrol allowance, you know, they can claim more, like car allowance, they can claim more. But for other staff, they can probably claim the handphone allowance, yeah? But, and again, all this, they don't have it properly documented. So what did they tell them? Put this into a proper policy. Put it into a proper policy. Put it in a proper handbook. Announce it. Put it into a circular. Circulate it. Circulate it to all the staff so that it becomes an official salesman allowance. Official allowance. Now, so we do all this, yeah, and once they have got all the proper documentations done, what do we do? We go back to the Indian Revenue Board and we tell them, look, all the allowances paid, yeah, all the outstation, 
and the salesman allowances paid, they are all in proper order. We have got all the calculation. We have got all the basis. How were they being paid? And we went back to the Inland Revenue Board. We did the analysis. We present the analysis. We tell them all these are proper and all these are paid in the production of gross income. Because if you don't pay all this to the staff, they won't do more work for you. You want them to travel around. You want them to go out station. You need to pay them so that they do more work for you, right? They will find sales for you. So therefore, we analyze them and we said all these allowances paid are genuine. They are all genuine, yeah? And in addition, all these allowances, hey, they are all reported in the EA form as well. Yes, this is very important. You can't just say that, hey, I have paid allowance, you know, but then uh, I, I actually didn't declare it as income of the staff, yeah? So I have put all this into the EA form of the staff and therefore, yeah, we say, these are all genuine and they are all wholly and exclusively entered for business purpose. And we substantiate them with bank slip, you know, a bank statement, pay slip, and even the EA form. And therefore, the inner revenue board agrees. Yeah, they agree and they drop the whole 300,000 issue and the client save 100 over 1,000 because of that. Yes, the client save 100 over 1,000 because of this. So what's the rationale behind? Now you may ask, what's the rationale behind? Look at it. The first rationale is please always, always think about hey, these expenses, yeah, are they wholly and exclusively incurred in the production of gross income? If they are, then it should be deductible because any expenses that were incurred wholly and exclusively in the production of gross income would qualify for deduction under subsection 33.1. And you, of course, must have all the evidence and proof to show, yeah? You must have all the supporting documents like EA form, payment slip, you know, oh, sorry, bank statement, pay slip, and things like that, okay? Now, I know you probably say, hey, I thought, yeah, I thought, yeah, this staff receiving the allowance uh, uh, would have some exemption, right? <laughs> Let me tell you, later I have a bonus session for you. So don't go anywhere. I have a bonus session for you. Yeah? I have a bonus session for you, which I want to tell you all about these staff allowances, yeah, that would give exemption, that has exemption, of which the staff can be exempted from paying tax if they receive allowances. Uh, those are in the bonus session, which I will tell you later, yeah? But let me tell you what is our advice. What's our advice? If you pay any staff allowances, please remember, declare them. Declare them because they are staff's emolument. Please make sure you declare them correctly in the EA form. Now, whether it is taxable or non-taxable allowance, declare them because there are different sections for you to declare, which I will also tell you later in my bonus session. And make sure you have all the proper documentations to justify the basis, you know, like the handbook that I was telling you, the circular that I was telling you, do it officially. Have a proper circular, have a proper handbook to officialize all these allowances. Yeah, have those bases and have all the supporting documents like EA form, payment slip, you know, payment proof, etc. This is very important. All right. Now I can see questions coming and I can see questions coming. Now let me remind you again. Yeah. All right. Later I'll have bonus session. Ah, I have bonus session. Ah, I don't want to show you. But, right? Now I have bonus session. Uh, so don't go anywhere, but take this opportunity to quickly continue to do this because we still have this lucky draw open to everyone. Yeah. How, what kind of lucky draw? you will stand a chance to win one of our three tickets to go to our tax audit and investigation webinars that is worth 498 ringgit each all right over there in that webinar you learn more about what is tax audit what is tax investigation and more cases on how we help the client to solve it yeah? this is worth 498 ringgit yeah but you can get it at no cost how by just doing this share this Facebook Live out, share this Facebook Live out right now by tapping or clicking the share button. Yeah, we still have bonus session to come. Huh? Then tag five friends, tag five friends into the comment box so that your friends will come in. You invite them to come in and they will thank you uh, for inviting them to learn this, all right? Then once we see you have tagged five friends in the comment box, you will stand a chance to win one of the three tickets to our tax audit and investigation webinar. All right, we're gonna draw three winners at the end. We're gonna draw three winners at the end, yeah, to win this 498 ringgit ticket, yeah? So do it right now, share this out and tag five friends. All right, now let me go to, oh, before the bonus session, let me answer to some questions, but I see there's some questions over here. Jun Lin was asking uh, if mobile allowance also won in the form EA, uh, I, I think you are trying to say if it's mobile allowance, do I need to actually uh, also disclose it in the form EA, right? Yes, you should. Yeah, even though it's phone allowance, you should declare it in the EA form as well. All right. 
Then Bi Ching has a question. Bi Ching is asking, uh, how about the allowance not for all staff? Then will this be subject to tax deduction? Well, it's also okay. If it's not for all staff, as long as you have a proper policy, proper circular stated, you know, what kind of staff would get it, you know, and what conditions, you know, do they have to travel? Do they have to do this and that to get it? That is okay. As long as you officialize your allowance and it is like an official uh, published circular in your office, that will be great, yeah? So Bi Ching, not necessarily all staff you can categorize what kind of stuff but make sure it's official life okay all right okay if you have more questions put them in i'll answer to your question later yeah all right now let me go into bonus session haha <laughs> i know a lot of you are actually waiting for this right this is not i told you i told you right that there are some allowances of which you will get uh exemption you will get exemption hey what kind of allowances would you get exemption, especially if you're a staff? You will say, hey, you know what? My boss pays me this uh, allowance. It goes to my EA form. And then I'll have to pay tax. I'll have to pay more tax. Well, yes, usually allowance, if it's paid, you get you have to pay more tax. But look at this. If you pay allowances, let's say it's for official duties, whether it's patrol, traveling, or even toll payment, yeah? If it is for the official duties of the staff, you can actually get exemption up to 6,000 ringgit a year, you know? That means, yeah, this allowance paid to a staff, if the staff's position, right, the staff uh, position is to travel for the business, for the company, you can actually get exemption up to 6,000 ringgit a year. And now, if a, uh, a staff, you know, has to pay, uh, have to send their child to a childcare center, yeah, for uh, and they have to pay childcare center, and this employer is so good to reimburse, yeah, to pay their childcare center fee, that this is childcare allowance. You can get up to 2,400 ringgit exemption. Yes, that's this 2,400 ringgit allowance exemption. Now, what about things like a, a gift of a phone or, or a, a, now we don't use pager, lah, a phone, you know, a PDA or things like that. Yeah? Now, if you give certain uh, new, uh, I mean, gadgets to your staff, one unit is exempted. That means the staff need not to pay tax for this gift received. Now, even if the employer pays the telephone line, you know, the telephone bills for the staff, that staff also exempted from, you know, tax for whatever that the company has paid for the staff. See that? Now, if it's other perquisites like past service achievement, you know, past achievement award, service excellence award, or even long service award. Now, long service award would mean if they have worked for more than 10 years, yeah, you get up to 2,000 ringgit exemption per year. So these are all the exempted allowances. Now, what, what about all these parking rates, parking allowance, or even meal allowance? Now, even all these uh, parking allowance, meal allowance, you also get exemption equivalent to the actual amount. That means, let's say, if this company pays for your parking allowance, you know, pay for your parking rental that you have to park your car in the office, that is actually tax exempted, you know, when they pay for you, even it goes into your EA form. Meal allowance, if it's given to as the same rate to all employees, now same rate at all employees, uh, that's also tax exempted, yeah, as long as it is given to all employees. So now you see, there are a lot of allowances that you can get exemption. Now, of course, there is also this subsidized interest for housing and education car or car loan, yeah, right? As long as it doesn't exceed 300,000, you also get exemption. But this one has a formula that you need to look at, yeah? Now, of course, if it is PTPTN, now I know some people will say, hey, you know what, My I, I still owe PTPTN and then my employee is paying for me. If that's perquisite, right? That's perquisite, right? Because the employer is paying back your PTPTN. That's also exempted. That's also exempted. But it is only between 2019 until 2021, only until end of this year, yeah? That's also tax exempted. Now, but I know a lot of people will ask me this question. Hey, you tell me all these allowances that is exempted, yeah? What if I'm the director of the company? What if I'm, I'm the sole proprietor? You know, I'm the owner of the company. I'm the partner of the company. Can I actually still get all this exemption? Answer is no, all right? Answer is no. Now, this is given to like pure employees, pure employees. If you are an employee that has control over the company, let's say you are a director, you have control over the company, or you are the sole proprietor, you are the owner, you are the partners of the partnership, then no, this is not applicable to you, yeah? Because you can control the company, you can actually abuse it, yeah? right? So cannot, yeah? So this is only for pure employee, all right? Now, so remember, if you have received all these tax exempt allowances, yeah, like what, what I've shown for you over here, number one, all the way to number nine, yeah, all these has to be declared, has to be declared in the EA form, but it's under part F. 
Under Part F would be the exempted allowance. Yeah, the exempted allowance. That's under Part F. Yeah, but let's say if it's non-exempted, if it's some any allowance is not exempted, then you don't put under Part F. You put it under the top part. I think it's Part B. If I'm not wrong. Yeah, that is on the taxable income. Yeah. So remember, if you get any exempt allowance, please. Put it under Part F, yeah, and therefore it is tax exempted. But of course, there are also certain uh, uh exempted uh, uh items, you know, that you, it's not required to be even declared in the form EA, yeah, not required to be declared in form EA if you receive this kind of exempted benefits or allowance or perquisites. You know, things like if you get consumer products free of charge, yeah, up to one thousand ringgit. Consumer products of the of your own company, if you get it free of charge, it's up to one thousand ringgit. You don't have to pay tax and it's exempted. You don't have to put it into EA form. You know, leave passage. If it's within Malaysia, not exceeding three times, you know, and outside Malaysia, leave passage outside Malaysia, un uh, limited to one time, one passage in calendar year, but limited to 3,000 ringgit, also exempted, all right? Now, if you receive any service provided free, yeah? Remember, yeah? if you receive any service provided free by the business of the employee to the employee, now this one, are not exempted. Remember, this one is not exempted. Their service provided for free is not exempted, but consumer products will be, yeah, exempted. But it is not exempted uh, uh, if it is ended, if it's provided by another company within the same group. Yeah, remember, yeah? All right. Uh, so service, oh, sorry. Service provided by other companies within the same group. Sorry. Service provided by other companies of the same group would be not exempted, but service provided by the company itself, by the employer itself, is still exempted. Sorry, yeah? So by the same company is exempted, but by, but by the other companies will be not exempted. Okay, then we have uh, like, you know, all the uh, medical expenses that the company has paid for you. You know that is not exempted. Yeah, that is not exempt. I'm uh, sorry, that is exempted. Oh, I can keep on saying wrong things. Yeah, it's still exempted. Yeah, it's still exempted. All right, and then uh, of course all these group premium insurance or even premium uh, insurance that is obligatory for foreign workers. All these are all exempted. You don't have to pay tax for that. All right. So this is the list. All right of tax exempt allowances that you could get that uh, you could get uh, as an employee. All right. Now let me just see. Wow, a lot of questions are coming in. A lot of questions are coming in. Huh? But before I go into the questions, yeah. Before I go into the question, let me just tell you. Now all these uh, uh knowledge, yeah. All this knowledge that I was telling you. I know you really want to know more. Right? You really want to learn more about all these. Hey, how do I get exemption? Whether this is deductible or not. Whether that is deductible or not. And you know what? This is what I have been always telling people. I say. I know a lot of people actually want to gain more tax knowledge, yeah? And, you know, just through this kind of short Facebook Live session, you may not be able to get all the knowledge you want. So, therefore, let me tell you, we have this platform called Tax Pod, yeah? Tax Pod is called Tax Professionals on Demand. Now, Tax Pod is not iPod, not Earpod, uh, it's Tax Professionals on Demand, yeah? Okay, now tax professionals on demand. What is this all about? It's actually a platform where you actually get to learn all about tax. You know, all the tax deductibility, whether or not you can get tax deductions. You know, where how can you maximize your tax savings? How you can save tax? So this platform gives you all the videos where right? it has all the videos with real life case studies and also live sessions. We also have live sessions like live webinars, live classes. You know, for you to learn. Now and today for you because you are actually watching our Facebook Live because today you are supporting my Facebook Live. I am giving you a very, very special offer. Yeah, a very promotional, special promotional offer for all of you. But if you want to know what kind of offer is that, go register your interest first. Yeah, register your interest. Go to bit.ly slash yyc tax pot 30. Yeah bit.ly slash yyc tax pot 30 yeah and my colleague has also put up the link yeah my colleague has put up the link in the comment box as well yeah just go there register interest just register interest let fi let's find out more let's find out more what is this all about you know what kind of videos you know what kind of tag uh, live webinars or live classes that you will get so this is we, we have a promotional offer for you. We have a very special promotional offer for you. So just register your interest at bit.ly slash yyc tax pot 30. All right. To secure your promotional offer. Yeah. All right. And do it right now. Just register your interest. Okay. All right. Now, I know there are a lot of questions. Okay. I know there are a lot of questions all coming in, all coming in already. Let me just see. Right? Let me just see what are all these questions about. Wow. Wow. I have a lot of questions. Okay, let me just answer to this one by one. Yeah. 
Okay, let's scroll back up. Yeah, okay, but before that, let me just go back to this slides in case you want to know, hey, uh, how do I register myself? You know, what kind of, what, what is this PAX Professionals on Demand all about? All right, okay, let's see. Uh, what questions have do I have to answer? Wow, so many questions, yeah. Let me just scroll back up. Then I see, okay, Vivian has got a long question. Wow, this one is a long one. Okay, a company trip for sole proprietor and partnership. If there is a company trip held, do we need to add back the sole proprietor and partners portion for tax purposes? What is company trip without bosses, right? Perhaps the passage is different from company trip. Therefore, for sole proprietor and partnership and even control director are needed to add back, right? No need actually, Vivian. Let me just tell you, yeah. If you say this is a real company trip, if this is a real company trip for everyone, all employees together with the bosses, yeah, all employees together with the boss, yeah, the whole company trip will be tax deductible if it is in Malaysia. Yeah, if it's done in Malaysia. Of course, if it's held overseas, if it's held overseas, then the leave passage, the air ticket will be non-deductible. Yeah, so you don't have to add back the director's portion if this is a company trip for everyone. I mean, if it's a company trip for just the directors, just the partners, then cannot lah. Yeah, it's not company trip anymore lah. But if it's for everyone, all staff, then yes, it will be still deductible. All right, Vivian? All right, let's carry on. All right, I have here from Susan. All right, Susan. Susan has got this question. Is part-timer salary and allowance also need to put in Form EA? Now, I would say if you are a part-timer, all right, of which they are, and I see that there, there are different views of part-timers over here, you know. If you say part-timer, what I usually say about part-timer is they are actually uh, still working, you know, on a consistent basis, on a consistent basis, and they are actually earning salary from you. You know, that's part-timer, yeah? Then, yes, you need to give them EA form because they are, you know, working per consistently with you. But if you say casual worker, now, if it's casual worker, then different, yeah? If it's casual worker, then you don't have to put EA form because they are, like, just casual. You know, they work, you pay. They don't work, you don't pay. Yeah, so you really have to look at whether they are, like, really your employee as a part-timer or are they just a casual worker, okay? Now, Charles has this question Charles is asking, yeah, for LLP, does this 6,000 travel exemption applies to partners who are also employees themselves? Now, I told you, Charles, yeah, if you are the partners of LLP, you get to control the company, right? You see, when you are partners, where you get to control the company, you don't get this 6,000 travel exemption anymore. So this is really for pure employees only, Charles, yeah, this is for pure employees only that has no control over the company, all right? Okay, I let me see. There are probably some questions over here as well. Let's see. Uh, all right, let me just look at this. <clears throat> oh, yeah, in case, in case, uh, if you have not done so, well, let me tell you what, let me tell you what, today we have lucky draw, yeah? Today we have lucky draw for you to win the tax audit and investigation webinar ticket with 498 ringgit each. So if you want to stand a chance to win that, do this right now. That is to share this Facebook Live out right now. Share this out right now and tag five friends. Tag five friends into the comment box. Then you stand a chance, yeah? You stand a chance to win because your name will go into the lucky draw. Tag five friends, share this Facebook Live out, and you get to win this, all right? So if you have not done it, do it right now, yeah, because we are, got, we are going to close this in a few minutes. We're going to close this in a few minutes, and after we have closed, you can't do this anymore, right? This is worth 498 ringgit each, yeah? So tag your friends and share this out, all right? Let me just see. I have a question here from Tiong Chi Eng, all right? Tiong Chi Eng is asking, uh, if staff purchase handphone costs 3,000, but the company only reimburses 2,000, Please advise whether 2000 is exempted from tax or not. Now, Tiong Chi Eng, you see, it must be the company buying the phone for the staff. If you say I only reimburse it, right, then it's not really buying for the staff already. See that, Tiong Chi Eng? So we are always saying uh, it's limited to one unit, yeah, one unit of the handphone. So, Tiong, Tiong Chi Eng, if you want to plan this, don't use the reimbursement method. Ask the company to buy the thing, give it to the staff, then you get exemption. Yeah? If you just reimburse, then this one would not get any exemption. Okay? All right. Uh, CP Singh is asking, to employer pay for employees, PT, PT, and may. God, la, why no? God, no, there are some employer who wants to retain the staff and they say, hey, you work for me, right? And I, I pay your PT, PT, and for you. You know, God, right? And that's exempted uh, in the hand of the employee. But this is only from 2019 until 2021. Uh. All right. Okay, uh, Tiong Chi Eng also say if the company reimburses staff personal handphone bill and bill consists of sub lines which is used by staff family members, please advise whether we need to choose one line to be exempted. Ah, oh, well, you see, 
uh, Tiong Chi Eng because if you reimburse, uh, if you reimburse the whole thing, right, of, of, of all the lines, right, only one line, not only one line is actually exempted, the rest will be non-exempted, but still it's okay, la, you know, you choose the line that is more, most expensive, la. that line will be tax exempted, the rest is not exempted because only one line is exempted, yeah, all right, get it, Tiong Chi Eng? Okay, let's continue and see what else, uh, we have more questions here from uh let's see let's see oh okay june june lim june lim was asking but mobile allowance is not in payslip and it's no phone bill well if you say no payslip no phone bill then cannot now uh, if they, they tell you what if you just give phone allowance you don't even have all the actual amount there uh, to to show then you can't then you can't actually get exemption because you need to actually get this uh pace uh, sorry get, get the bill to show yeah to show that a hey, um, the company is actually paying the actual amount yeah so you need that bill all right uh then Tang Siu Kim says petrol allowance I didn't get this question yeah uh, Tang Siu Kim I do not know what you mean by uh what's your question over here all right then Jun Lim asks yeah also one in the EA form oh you're saying that if there's no payslip there's no I mean not in payslip no in phone bill right I mean if there's no phone bill it's not exempted if you pay the allowance mobile allowance of course you have to put into the form EA yeah all right then uh next is Bi Ching. Bi Ching asks, must it be circular to all staff? How about only letter issued to particular staff for that allowance? And the allowance will not be the same for each staff. Can can now if you have a proper uh letter, you know, sent a uh, given to the staff and then it's signed between both parties, that means the employer and the employee, to acknowledge that where anyway, you are getting this allowance, that's also okay. Yeah. If you don't have a circular, make sure you have this letter, which is part of like an employment agreement. Yeah, Bi Ching. All right. Next, we have Eway. Eway is asking uh, if a staff have income from few company. Is this exemption limit to one company only or total? Well, Eway, if you have income from a few companies, uh, every company can also give you that you know one time exemption, right? Really, because you're earning from different employers, ma. You're earning from different employers, so therefore, every employer that give you the EA form, uh, they can actually put that exempted amount. <laughs> All right, so it is for. Uh, I mean, the exemption is for each company. Yeah, it's for each company. All right, then what else? Let me see. Okay, I have VK Co asking this question. Telephone, mobile, one line, each registered under employee name is exempted from personal tax. Yes, yes, I've show you just now right let me just show you again yeah yes i've showed you yeah for mobile allowance uh, mobile bills you know all these yeah they will get yeah they will get uh exemption but only one line yeah only for one line all right but for each category la, right? like fixed line is one category mobile phone is one category la, yeah broadband is one category la. so you get one line that is exempted now remember yeah if you don't get an actual amount yeah to to actually reimburse the bill you know if you receive a fixed allowance uh, then it's taxable yeah then it's taxable so you don't want to get fixed allowance you want you know your uh, your company to reimburse yeah to pay back your phone bill all right get that huh all right next what else should i see uh wong lee sin is asking the figure should i put in payslip uh which figure only sin which figure are you trying to say are you trying to say the allowances well if it's allowance definitely has to go into payslip right to then then only it shows how much you have gotten yeah how much you have gotten all right now and then i have vk go again vk go is asking give one git mobile is exempted need to put in ea form yes it, you have to put it into ea form but under the exempted part yeah the exempted portion remember just now i show you also let me just show you again huh? the, the one gift uh, is under number three man, right number three right and we said all these allowances are uh, from number one to number nine you have to declare under part f part f is the exempted section yeah the exempted section okay next serena serena is asking want to ask that part yeah that part uh f6k is it not included in the amount of allowance uh six thousand part f six thousand is it not included in the amount of allowance what do you mean by that uh, well the six k is the uh, uh traveling allowance right i suppose yeah so you're saying that six thousand allowance is it not included in amount of allowance uh i don't really get this question serena i really don't can't get that part f six thousand not included amount of allowance well i didn't get your question but what i want to tell you is that six thousand can be the exempted allowance if it's for official duties you put it under part f but if it's any other allowance yeah then you put it under another part yeah that's what i can tell you lah all right i'll answer to a few more questions huh? all right and let me tell you one more minute i'll give you one more minute huh, to tag your friends to share this facebook live out to stand a chance to win this ticket to tax audit and investigation webinar because after this one minute i'm gonna close i'm gonna close this already and you won't you won't actually go into the lucky draw already yeah so please do it right now if you have not done so share this facebook live out 
tag your friends, five friends, tag five friends into the comment box so that you get the a chance to win our tax audit and investigation webinar. Yeah, worth 498 ringgit. All right. Now, next, uh, what else? What else? What else? Okay. Uh, Bi Ching. Bi Ching was asking, if mobile bill under company name still need to declare in EA form, company provide the mobile for sales staff or manager to perform their job? Well, if it's under the company's name, yeah, and if you say this is an official uh, uh, company's line, yeah, company's mobile line, then of course you don't have to put into EA law, right? It's already the company's expense, all right? Now, uh, can you explain 2-1 again? Huh? What do you mean by 2-1, right? I, I, I don't get this part. Which part is 2 number 1? Uh, 2 or 2-2, two, two, this one, leave passage. Oh, I think you're talking about this, is it? Uh, I, I suppose so, uh, Joanne. This one is a leave passage that is exempted in the hand of the employee. Yeah. So if an employee gets a leave passage to travel within Malaysia from the employer, yeah, three times, yeah, they can get up to three times tax exempted. Yeah, they don't have to pay tax for the perquisites received. But if it's outside Malaysia, they get only one time per year, but and the maximum is only three thousand ringgit. Anything that exceeds three thousand, it will be taxable already. Okay. All right. Next, uh, let me see. I have Sharon. We pay car allowance 1,000 monthly to sales manager. Is it considered as traveling allowance and subject to 6,000 limit? Well, if you say this 1,000 is for their traveling allowance, if you don't call it car allowance, you call it traveling allowance, right? and if it's for your sales manager for official duties, yes, it can be exempted under this 6,000 limit. All right, okay. Then we have UKH. Working director with controlling share cannot enjoy the allowance, cannot enjoy the exemption. Yes, you are right. So how do company cover the expenses incurred by he or her, you know, which he is genuine for business like handphone, petrol, etc., by using claim as per in expenses incurred? Now, you, I would ex I would say, yeah, if they cannot enjoy the allowance, well, it would be best if the company uses the mileage claim. Use the mileage method for the uh, 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 traveling, yeah? Don't claim the petrol, but just use mileage claim, yeah? And for the handphone, well, you can probably use the company to register the handphone instead of the uh, uh, person's name, yeah? Use the company to register a, a company's phone and let the director use. Then, yeah, then you can cover all the expenses already. <laughs> all right. Okay, next, who else? Wow, so many questions. I answered a few more questions, huh? then I have to go into the lucky draw already, all right? I'll just answer a few more questions, yeah? So VK Co is asking, how is employee insured medical card uh, if employer want to pay as expense? Uh, why suddenly insured medical card? How is employee insured medical card if employee wants to pay as expense? Well, I didn't get your question again, VK Co. What do you mean by how is employer insured medical card? <laughs> all right, I think you, you probably want to get how to get deduction, right? I would say, VK Co., get the company to buy the medical uh, insurance for the for the staff. Then the company can get a uh, deduction, all right? Company buy the medical insurance under the company name. Yeah, the company is the policy owner, all right? Richard Tan is asking, is there a requirement that employee must provide evidence to employer to support childcare allowance paid? Well, Richard, yes. I would say you have to. Why? Because if you say, you know, the company is paying childcare allowance, yeah, because the the, uh, the staff has to send the child to a childcare center, you need to prove, you need to show that this staff has indeed sent the child to a childcare center and has to pay. Otherwise, you can really abuse. You can just su su simply say, I'm paying childcare allowance when the staff is not actually sending the, the child to a childcare center. So you need the evidence yeah, to support that the employee is sending their child to a childcare center and has to pay some money for that. All right. Okay. Next, uh, let me just uh, go to, I I'll probably answer to those that have not asked me question uh, because I have a few more to answer, right? Those that have not asked me question. Uh, oh, Vivian Xiao. Okay. Petrol traveling allowance paid to director with full control is under non-tax allowable. Non-tax exempted, yeah, not tax, not tax allowable, non-tax exempted, yeah, it will not be exempted because director has control over the company. Okay, let's see who else has not asked question before. I think Sharon has asked question before, but let me just quickly answer. If we buy group insurance for staff, includes working directors, is this all tax exempted? I, I think you're asking whether it's tax deductible, right? Now, if you buy group insurance for all staff, including directors, that will still be tax deductible. Yeah, no problem with that. All right. Let's continue. Let's see uh, who has not asked question. Oh, Claire has not asked question before. If the company reimburses full amount of mobile to staff, consider the company buy the phone. Well, yes, if you reimburse the whole thing, if you reimburse the whole thing, you can consider as company buying the phone. Yeah, so you cannot you don't just subsidize it, just pay off the whole thing. All right. Okay, answer to one last question from for someone that have not asked question. Yeah. 
I'll answer to, I'll ask the uh, Caris. Caris has not asked a question before. The meal allowance paid to employees for the outstation trip, is it exempted? Need to be included in year form? Now, Caris, if you say this meal allowance uh, is actually given to all staff as long as they travel outstation, it's fair. Yeah, It's given to all staff as long as they travel outstation, it will be exempted. See, see this, uh, a meal allowance received on a regular basis given at same rate to all staff, uh, right, will be exempted. Yeah. And you see, even meal allowance given uh, for upstation, yeah, right, in exercising employment would be also exempted if it's given at a fixed rate in an internal circular or written instruction. See that? So if it's like in an internal circular given to all staff, everyone with, I mean, or everyone that get this outstation allowance or meal allowance can be exempted. Yeah, this meal allowance can be exempted. All right. Okay, now I think uh, we have to go into the lucky draw session already. Yeah, we have to go into lucky draw session and let me just look at the lucky draw. Let me see if the lucky draw is ready. I have uh, got all the names of people that have already tagged, you know, five names. Yeah, if you have tagged five names, your name would go into the lucky draw pool. Yeah, your name would go into the lucky draw pool and you would stand a chance up to win one of the three tickets to our tax audit and investigation webinar. And that is worth 498 ringgit yeah that's worth 498 ringgit each right so let me get this lucky draw wheel out yeah but before that let me just unshare the screen and reshare so that i can bring the wheel out for you all huh? all right let me just stop sharing and start sharing again all right now let me just share this and let me bring this wheel out where is the wheel all right let me put it put it over okay yep everyone can see the wheel now these are the names these are the names of people that have already put in your uh, i mean tag five friends and share our facebook live uh, and let's see if you are able to get the ticket to our tax audit and investigation webinar yeah we are gonna draw three winners yeah winner number one let's see who is the first winner Let's go spin it. Yeah. All right. The first winner is... Is it you? Yes, it's Joyce Gunn. Thank you. Go. Congratulations. Congratulations, Joyce. Joyce, you are the first winner. You are the first winner to our tax audit and investigation webinar. Now, if you are here, please drop us a message. Please PM us. Just tell us that I'm here. I'm here. I'm the winner. Yeah, please drop us a message right now so that we know we know you are here and we can you know uh, pm you we can get in touch with you and give you the ticket to our tax audit and investigation webinar yeah please drop us a message pm us and tell us that you are here all right let me draw the second winner now who's the second winner right now yes joyce has said i'm here thank you joyce yeah we'll get in touch with you the next person is is it you is it you yes it's you yes it's claire Kwong. claire Kwong. yeah i just answered to your questions right you are the winner you are the second winner to our tax audit and investigation webinar you are the winner to our tax audit and investigation webinar and you have just won this ticket yeah, please drop us a message. Yeah, drop us a message, Claire Tuang. Right? Yes, Claire has just say yeah. Right? You are the winner, and we will get in touch with you and give you the ticket to our tax audit and investigation webinar. Yeah, with four hundred ninety eight ringgit. And now I'm gonna draw the last winner. This is the last winner right now. Let's see who is this last winner. I know your names are here. I know you want to win, but let's see if you are the lucky winner. The last lucky winner is. Yes, I think it's Muhammad Shafi. Yes, Muhammad Shafi. Congratulations, you are the last winner. You have just won yourself a ticket to the tax audit and investigation webinar with 498 ringgit. Please drop us a message. Please drop us a message right now to show us that you are here so that we can get in touch with you and we can give you the ticket to our tax audit and investigation webinar, All right? So Shafiq, please do, you know, tell us that you are here right now. And yes, once again, you know, thank you so much, everyone, yeah, 
for joining my Facebook Live, you know, for supporting my Facebook Live. You know, it is like one hour already right now. And you know what? Today, I have a very, very important thing that I want to tell you all. Now, first of all, if you say, I still want to learn more things, I want to have more tax knowledge, yeah? If you really want to have more tax knowledge, please go to this link, bit.ly slash YYC tax pot 30, register interest. You know, we'll tell you more about what tax pot is all about for you to learn more. But today, let me tell you, Today is episode 30, and do you know we have done 30 episodes already? 30 episodes is not easy to do all this, you know, to get my team to study, to go through all the cases that we have handled before and share all these techniques with all of you. But today, 30 episodes marks the end of our first season. Yes. Today is the final episode. Episode 30 is the final episode of our first season. Yeah, we have done 30 episodes. You know, and we've done this for more than a year already. I know you want to go back and view all the previous episodes. Yeah, go to my Facebook page. Go to Tax Guru Zen Chow Facebook page. Remember to go like, share, follow my Facebook page. Follow my Facebook page. Yeah, so that you get to see all the videos that I have yeah, in my video session. Yeah? All 30 episodes will be there, right? But today will be the final episode for season one. Yeah, We have, we have to draw this to a to an end for season one. Yeah, But we are going to come up with more things in future. Right? We're going to think about what, I, what else, what other things can we share with all of you. Yeah, So make sure you go to my Facebook page, like, share, follow my Facebook page. Please follow my Facebook page so that you get the first-hand information. You get the first-hand information on the next thing that we're going to do in future. All right. So I must thank all of you that have followed me for 30 episodes, especially I see some names uh, that have been appearing again and again every time I do this sharing session. Yeah. But today, it marks the end of the first season, 30 episodes. If you have not watched all of them, go to my Facebook page, Tax Guru Zen Chow. Go to the video section and you will get to view all of them. All right. So I hope to see you again next time. I hope that I will see you in my other Facebook live sessions. But make sure you follow my page so that you know when is my next thing. Yeah. And what is that? All right. So thank you once again. Thank you for supporting me for all 30 episodes. And I really, really hope to see you again next time in my other Facebook live sessions, in my other tax sharing session. All right. Once again, take care, everyone. Stay safe. It's a Friday. Have a good Friday. Have a good weekend ahead. And I would really want to thank all of you once again. Thank you so much. And I'm here showing you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye for now. And really goodbye. Take care, everyone and have a great weekend ahead. Goodbye.